Well, I probably got some good news. Actually, this is old news, and uh, I wasn't the discoverer of this deal, but anyway, it's on the internet, and I'll point to a link where it's at. It's old technology that's astounding, for real. I'm not even playing drama here, man. It's It just blows my mind. This has been out for a couple decades or something, <laughs> more than that. It's accessing the primeval code. In other words, um, now I just showed you my Lukoski multi-wave oscillator, which is a portable version with one, one Tesla coil. Now, it's maybe a little bit along something of that lines because I'd almost think that something like that could possibly even have an influence on it. But what goes on is there's a way, and they've known this since the early 90s. They've known this since the early 90s. Large, large... Uh, Major corporations actually called, uh, actually it's, uh, it was Cibra, CIBA, C C the pharmaceutical giant. They were actually doing experiments with this back in the early 90s. Now they're known as Novartis. And, um, well, it looks like it's one of those deals where uh, a lot of entrenched industries would be out the window. And maybe, maybe the depopulation plot would be out the window too. Well, um, well, anyway, let me cut to the chase on this deal. It looks like you can actually take GMO, GMO, genetically modified seeds and organisms, and make them go back even better than the best organic with a, an electrical current, more or less. Well, now they're saying is it's not exactly putting the electricity through the seeds themselves or the fish eggs or whatever it is. They're actually on a plate. And um, it's like it says, seeds, grains, and fish eggs were exposed for several days to an electrical field. The top was negative and the bottom was positive on these plates. And the electricity was not flowing through the seeds. It was very, very high electricity, but it was not flowing through the seeds or the fish eggs. But it was, it was like a field there something going on. Almost reminds me of uh, the Lukowski coil. That's, that's why I put it in front of this video. So the, the top, the bottom plate of the plate, of the bottom electrode was a plate of a mesh connected to a positive or ground. The top electrode was to a negative pole at a DC, uh, with a uh, DC generator with one kilovolt to several tens of kilovolts in range. But the electricity was not going through the actual fish eggs or anything like that, or the seeds. Um, he says, in other words, the space between the electrodes must not be conductive. But something else is going on here. It's almost like it reminds me of that Lukowski coil. Like you're not actually getting zapped with the electricity, but it's putting some kind of energy around into you or doing something. Negative ions. I don't really know exactly. I don't think anybody knows. But they found that um, it's just an electric field ranging from 750 volts per centimeter to 5,000 volts per centimeter. But there's no current flow going through it. It's like you have the positive on the bottom and a negative on the top with all this high voltage. But it's just being applied up here and you got the seeds or the fish eggs in between. And what happens is, it wakes up, it does not change the DNA, but it turns off the junk DNA, and it wakes up the primeval code. Like, the code that was in there with the strongest genes, or strongest DNA. So, in other words, they found, they were able to grow, they, from the fish eggs, they had uh, giant trout that came out that were extinct in Europe for 130 years. Um, that that was came out of the fish eggs. They had types of corn with like multiple ears on it, like that were much more abundant. They were extremely resistant to like um, problems where you know, you know, today you'd have like different insects would be eating them and things like that. They would they would be extremely resistant to that, more so than genetically modified. They'd be far more abundant production of crops. There would also be, um, uh, in other words, they'd also grow much, much, much faster because 
which well, it's also meant that they can be grown in areas that normally they could not be grown in because, say, um, in other words, he said the manipulated wheat growth was so rapid that it was ripe in four weeks instead of the usual seven months. So it took a one month to grow wheat where it usually took seven months. So that pretty much leaves it open to grow wheat pretty much everywhere, right? That's another thing. Big deal, ain't it? Well, ask Bill Gates about this. Um, <laughs> buy Linux. <laughs> Screw Microsoft. <laughs> or, I don't even have Linux, but anyway. I don't know how to use it. That's a problem, you know? But uh, <laughs> I don't like that Bill Gates guy because you know why. You know why, right? But basically, it says they do not involve, you see, with GMO, genetically modified, they are actually modifying or inserting something into the DNA of the plant to make it resistant to Roundup or to make it so pests, will, if they eat it, they die or something like that because it has something in it that kills them. This does not involve a mutation of the seed or the fish egg or anything like that. It's actually, it's not a genetic engineering. You're not changing the DNA code, which you are actually doing. There's no new organism being created like in genetically modified. What you're actually doing is you're retrieving the strongest and best gene expressions in the DNA, the primeval code. That's amazing. Now, <laughs> how do you do this? I don't know. <laughs> you know, it looks like you got to have between uh, one kilovolt and or one thousand volts and and uh, five thousand volts. You know, that sounds almost like the Tesla coil deal, doesn't it? Except you don't want the electricity to go through the. Um, it almost reminds me. I mean, almost like the Lukowski coil with the Tesla coil, like when you're transmitting an energy from actually the real Lukowski coil used like three Tesla coils and a sending. Uh, array of copper coils and a receiving array of copper coils. Like that one I got here is a cheaper one. It's less expensive, you know. It's not thousands of dollars. I think it was like 950 or something like that, right? It's a thousand with the shipping around there. You know, it's not big bucks, you know. But I, I think it, I notice when I get in front of it, though, it gives me more energy or something. But I start thinking, wow, that's pretty cool. Because, you know, if you had this, it's almost like, you know, what you could almost, almost think would, would work. You know, because it's not, I don't think this is actually like a pinpoint science. Um, you could probably take the multi-wave oscillator and expose, you know, a true one, or even like say one that was kind of along the lines, because, you know, I'm not sure if it has to be the exact perfect one that Georges Lukowski did, but that might even be better. You might want to have it where you got the one descending and the receiving, and you have in between here the seeds on like something that's non non-conductive, like on uh, I don't know plastic mesh or something, whatever the hell it is. And the field of electricity and the energy is between these two plates because it's just telling you that you have the negative on the top between 1,000 and 5,000 volts, and a positive on the bottom with between one and 5,000 volts, and it's ground or ground, and the electricity is not actually conducting through the seeds or the fish eggs, but it's in that field. It's in the field. There's like it's just something going on between those two poles of electricity. It almost reminds you of the uh, Lukowski multi-wave oscillator. But they found and this is not some like you know back uh, garage scientist. This was this was the major this was the major pharmaceutical companies found this, but nobody's interested in it. Because <laughs> you know it would be out of business, right? I mean, what does it tell you, right? What does it tell you? And it doesn't even look like you need a Lukowski coil. Maybe you could just take high voltage electricity and put a copper coil over here and, uh, you know, another one down here. Once the negative's on the top and the positive's on the bottom. No electricity flows through there, but it's in this field. And it's been exposed to this for days. But what it does it actually converts the seeds, seed expressions. It takes out the, it basically, you know, it doesn't change it,
but basically brings out the best expression of the genes in the seeds itself. It brings out the primeval code. So all the junk they put into the GMO seeds basically is like, mm, they, it gets like more dormant. And the stuff that's the real power of the seeds comes out stronger. I'm going to point to the link on this thing because you probably think I'm full of it or something, you know. It's actually been around for a long time. There's a book written on it called The Primeval Code. And I'm suspecting that, you know, one of the, the, the one, the one, me I suspect this. This is actually what I'm thinking. If you actually took the Lukowski multi-wave oscillator and you put the genetically modified seeds in between it for several days, I bet you make them into super organic stuff that's better than original. <laughs> Probably. Now, this also means people can't be sheep. They got to roll up their sleeves. They got to do this stuff, you know? You got to do it. Now, me, moi, if, you know, I get, you know, if I, I still, I got a portable version of that damn thing. Um, that's what I'd be trying. You know, if I get into growing something and we're all stuck with genetically modified from Monsanto, well, the underground is going to have to go with the Lukowski multi-wave oscillators and bring out the primeval code. <laughs> As a matter of fact, we can all use that on ourselves and make ourselves into uh, super intelligent uh, people that will fight him back in a ways they'll never imagine. How is that? And, you know, this is already an idea. You never heard this one anywhere, did you? Did you ever hear this? Change GMO seeds back to better than freaking organic? Huh? They know that. They, I didn't develop it, okay? I didn't develop it. It's right on the internet, for crying out loud. And it's not some gossip conspiracy site. You know, I didn't get it off of, you know, I don't want to name these sites. I got it off. It's actually right on here. This is like from the biggest pharmaceutical companies. They knew about this since the early 90s. But I'm suspecting that the Lukowski coil is probably even a better method to do this with than even just the regular electrical fields where they have, you know, the, the negative on the top and the positive on the bottom. You're putting some kind of energy through there. You're awakening things. So you, what you're doing is you're awakening a gene expression that's been dormant. And then when it, that the seeds are exposed to this and when they're planted later on, they grow into like super crops. Like they gave an example. Wheat grows in a matter of, well, four weeks or a month, a month versus seven months. You know what the implications of that? It means there's a wheat growing season pretty much everywhere on this earth, no matter how cold it is practically. I mean, it's not too many places that, you know, almost every place on the earth has at least like a one month growing season for wheat. You know, probably Canada and stuff, you know what I mean? No problem, right? And, um, you know, the thing is, it's also far more abundant, far hardier, and everything else. It's, it's, in other words, it's more hardy against uh, problems with insects and other things. It doesn't get attacked that easily. It's very robust. It's almost like having the qualities of hey, wheat. And I'd imagine it would be more nutritious, too. I'd almost, you'd almost have to figure, ergo, you know, if it's doing all that, it's probably the opposite of GMO. In nutrition and what it could do for the human body, it might be one of the you know it might be a wheat that's actually good as taking hemp seed or something like that, right? Now is that a, is that not in an amazing f story? And I'm going to tell you where you know I, I'm kind of like you know taking this a little further than what the article says or the book says, and I'm also my idea is about my it's strictly my idea about the. Lukowski multi-wave oscillator, but I, I have a tendency to think that that would be even a faster way to bring out the code in the seeds, but that's untested. They were just using electricity. Remember, the electrical current does not go through the seeds themselves or the fish eggs. It actually is just in the field. You got the positive on the bottom and a negative on the top, and there's like a, you know, a, a screen here, a non-conductive screen holding all that stuff and you know the seeds in place and it's in this field of energy and it's bringing out primeval DNA it's bringing out the strongest DNA expressions in the seeds themselves 
while at the same time the weakest expressions of the seeds like the GMO modified garbage are being like you know it's not changing nothing it's not changing nothing it's leaving it the same well I hope this you know this is one video I hope gets around you know not just for me personally or anything like that but it's almost like you know people the biggest thing they got where I see uh, there's a problem with uh, you know the powers that be are trying to control the population and you see the first tenant on the Georgia Godstones is keep the population within um, under 500 million right guide humanity with reason guide reproduction you know with diversity and you know the best biological experiments we can produce or whatever well you know I mean who the hell who wants the elite to do that you know what I mean I mean, for all I care, you know, actually people can say, we're going to take charge of our own health, we're going to take charge of our own growing of our own crops, and we can actually improve the world, uh, make it far better for everybody involved, than rather than have a bunch of freaking micromanagers with a bunch of big fat egos trying to tell everybody what to do. We don't need them. But first, we need to not be one thing not be one thing and that is called sheep because actually in my opinion sometimes I think sheep are b much bigger fighters than a lot of the human race I'll leave you with that thought but uh, this is a big deal this is a big deal and it can throw a big 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 monkey wrench into the works of the new world order to the max and Bill Gates and George Soros and all the rest of those yo-yos anyway have a nice day